Alright, what is going on guys? Gino Checker back in for another video today. And in this video today, I want to go a little bit more in depth on body fat. Since I think that body fat in general is probably one of the most confusing topics in the whole fitness industry. I think that a lot of people, especially in the fitness industry, really underestimate or overestimate their body fat percentages. Since when someone might think that they are, for example, 15%, they might even be lower or they might even be higher depending on their own mental expectation of what 15% body fat actually looks like. And you can pretty much say the same for someone who thinks they're like 12% body fat or 10% body fat or maybe even someone who's very lean and thinks that they're like 8%, they might even be 15%. So I took some realistic examples and I'm going to be posting a picture on the screen right now. And I want you guys to guess before the video actually starts what these body fat percentages actually are. And I think that, you know, if you're not really aware of what these percentages could actually be, you might be surprised at the actual results. And the whole reason for this video is to give you guys accurate expectations of what a certain percentage actually looks like. Since a lot of people tend to get uh, demotivated when they get their body fat tested. And I've had this with multiple clients as well that once they get their body fat tested, whatever measurement tactic they use, they tend to get discouraged by the number. So I want to give you guys some accurate examples. So without further ado, let's get to some accurate body fat measurements. Now, I only chose people that have gone through a DEXA scan. A DEXA scan is widely known to be one of the most accurate body fat measurement tools on the market. DEXA stands for Dual Energy X-ray Absorptiometry. So that basically means that they will take your entire body put it through a scan and what it measures is your body fat percentage, obviously, uh, your total amount of muscle mass, your bone density, the total amount of water that you have in your body and so forth. It's a pretty pricey way to measure your body fat, but if you truly want an accurate measurement of your total body stats, then a DEXA scan is probably your best bet. But we'll go more in depth on whether it's actually worth it uh, later on in this video. So without further ado, let's hop on to the first body fat example. Now the first example on the list here is Jeff Nippert. Now Jeff Nippert went through a DEX scan about three years ago or something in the lab where his buddy Chris Barrett works and his body fat came out to 8.4%. Now if you look at this picture from the time that he had his body fat scanned, you would say that he's very lean, especially since he was if I'm not mistaken, cutting at that particular moment or just came off of a cut, but to give him 8.4 is probably something that not a lot of you expected. And the reason for that is largely due to body fat distribution, right? If you look at his upper body, uh, he is very lean. He doesn't store a lot of fat on his upper body and he has a lot of muscle mass, right? Oftentimes, the more muscle mass somebody has, the leaner someone will look regardless of their body fat. And that is also one of the biggest reasons that a DEXA scan is probably the most accurate compared to, for example, a body fat caliper. Since if you only have skin to measure your entire body fat, uh, if you have less body fat on uh, your abs and have more body fat on your legs, for example, the body fat percentage that will come out of that measurement will really be off compared to a DEXA scan, simply because everybody stores body fat differently and in different areas of the body. Next on the list is Jeff Nippert's girlfriend, Stephanie Buttermore. Now, Stephanie has done a DEXA scan, I believe, at the end of last year, so the end of 2018, before she went all in. Now, this is also a very interesting one since she had a DEXA scan done for two days. And the difference between the two scans are pretty surprising. So when she went in on day one, she had a body fat percentage of 16.6%. And when she went in for the second day, she had a body fat of 14.9%. Now you might think that that's pretty insane, especially regarding that the DEXA scans were not taken that far apart. But it is also something that you have to understand. Body fat measurements, regardless of the measurement tool, so if you have like a body analyzer scale or body fat calipers or a DEXA scan, they are all momentary measurements, right? If on the first day you slept very well, uh, you drank a lot of water, you had your nutrition in check, you didn't sweat a lot, or you maybe even sweat a little bit more, you will have different results on the day of the first measurements compared to the second measurements, simply because the total stats of your body will be different. So if you have a lower body fat on the first measurement and a higher body fat on the second measurement, or maybe even the other way around, that doesn't mean that you have lost or gained body fat or muscle mass for that particular, right? It's all a momentary measurement. So you can even see here on the stats of Stephanie Buttermore that on the first day, she had less muscle mass than on the second day. And in just a couple of days difference, that's pretty impossible, especially if you consider the context of the individual, right? She's been lifting for multiple amount of years. So you can't make that drastic of a change in just a couple of days. So 
understand that if you get your body fat tested or if you get a DEXA scan, don't be too emotionally attached to the results of that test or from the results of multiple tests. It's just a momentary measurement. Just take it as a tool to measure your progress over time. Now, another very interesting one is the DEXA scan that Mike Thurston has done. If you look at Mike Thurston's physique, uh, you would think that he has a very low body fat percentage, especially if you look at his upper body. He's very lean up top. He has very chiseled abs and pretty much stays lean in his upper body year round. But the reason that I'm putting emphasis on upper body is because, for example, and he stated this in his own video as well. Pretty lean for your, your upper body, very lean in your arms and more body fat in your, uh, in your legs. I kind of knew that for a while now because every time I try to get like as lean as possible, my lower body has always been the area which holds a lot of stubborn body fat. His legs are less lean than his upper body. So that's also why I put an emphasis on body fat distribution. Everybody stores body fat differently. If you have more fat on your legs and less fat on your upper body, you can quote unquote get away with a higher body fat simply because you're storing less on your upper body. So you will appear leaner than your actual body fat percentage truly is. So this will be a surprise for a lot of people, but he came out at 15% body fat. A lot of people actually estimated him to be a lot lower body fat, but again, this comes down to the body fat distribution. He also has a lot of muscle mass, so that obviously plays a huge role. Because the more muscle mass you carry, the leaner you will look at a higher body fat. So the ratio between his muscle and his body fat is more in favor of his muscle mass, simply because the amount of muscle mass is higher. All right, so next on the list, and this might be a surprise to a lot of people as well, is Matt Does Fitness. Now, when you look at Matt Does Fitness, his upper body seems to be very lean, and that might be a reason to think that his body fat is pretty low. Uh, a lot of people tend to estimate him in the 8 to 10% body fat range, but when he got his DEXA scan done, he came out at 14.1%. 14.1%, that's yeah. my actual yeah. body fat percentage. 14.1%. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy with that. Again, this comes down to body fat distribution and the amount of muscle mass that he carries, since he carries a lot of muscle mass. And the way he stores his body fat is pretty favorable in terms of overall aesthetics, right? He has the least amount of body fat on his upper body and especially the front half. Since if you look at his YouTube channel and his pictures, he pretty much has abs year round. And the reason for that is because he simply does not store a lot of body fat on his upper body. Now, another interesting thing, and this is also something that is stated in his video, is that when he tested his body fat with body fat calipers and a bot bot, the amount of body fat or the body fat measurement was a lot lower than a DEXA scan. And that pretty much goes to show that a DEXA scan is probably the most accurate since it measures your total body. Now, if you search on Google for body fat examples, you will see a very generic list of certain body fat examples that you've most likely seen a thousand times already. And when you come to realize that a lot of these people who look very lean have higher body fat percentages than the ones that you see on all of those generic lists, your expectations might change for the better. All right, so next on the list is Alberto Nunez. Now, if you're in the bodybuilding scene, you're most likely familiar with Alberto Nunez. He's from Team 3DMJ and he's a very well-known natural bodybuilder. And he has a lot of pictures that went pretty viral, especially due to his level of leanness and the amount of vascularity that he gets when he is truly like stage shredded. You would think that he has body fat of like, uh, I've heard people saying like 3.5% or 4%, but when he got his DEXA scan done, he came out at 6.2%. Your body has 10.4 pounds of fat only. Like truly, I've seen thousands upon thousands of comments saying like, how the hell are you 6.2%? If you're 6.2%, then I'm like 50%. But keep in mind, um, this is an accurate measurement. It's a DEXA scan, right? Uh, with body fat calipers, he would have probably came out at like 2%, especially since he's like hashtag team dick skin. This just goes to show that when you're estimating your body fat, uh, you're probably better off going at the higher end. And especially if you want to get tested, like truly tested, uh, that will save you a lot of discouragement. Next on the list is Wesley Vissers. Now he's also a fellow Dutchy and he's a very well-known classic bodybuilder. Now when he got his DEXA scan, he came out at 4.5%. Now, if you were to compare Alberto Nunez and Wesley Vissers. All right, so this is the first picture that I took actually three days before the scan. At the point in time that they actually got their DEXA scan done, 
You would think that Alberto is leaner than Wesley, but since Wesley you know, obviously has a higher amount of muscle mass compared to Alberto, the body fat of Wesley is lower, while Alberto Nunez looks a lot leaner and more vascular. So that is also the kind of context that you need to keep in mind. It also all depends on your total body stats. So the higher your muscle mass is, the lower your body fat will appear to be. Now, and lastly, I would like to cover Greg O'Gallagher from Kino Body. Now he's also pretty lean year round, but when he got his body fat tested, he came out at 7.1% fat. Now from my opinion, I would estimate him to be at around 10 to 11% body fat at the time that he got his DEXA scan, but he came out at 7.1%. So to sum this all up, there are a couple of things that you need to take in mind when it comes to either estimating your body fat or measuring your body fat. When it comes to the look of a certain individual, there are a couple of things that you need to take in mind. Now, first off is obviously, I've covered this in the video a lot of times already, body fat distribution, right? If you're seeing someone who has a very lean upper body, like chiseled abs and a pretty shredded chest, you would think that he's like sub 10% or even lower body fat. Well, in reality, if that person stores the most body fat on the legs or, for example, the lower back, that person is obviously not going to be showing that area of the body since that area stores the most body fat. And some people just have very favorable body fat distribution. There are just a lot of people who store the most amount of body fat on the lower back, on the legs or the glutes or whatever, and they can stay pretty lean year round while still, you know, adding some body weight since the body fat will go to favorable storage places. So that does not always mean that the person is using like performance enhancing drugs or whatever. Most of the time it always comes down to having favorable body fat distribution. The second thing that you need to take into consideration as well is the amount of muscle mass that the individual carries. If you put two individuals next to each other and one has a low amount of muscle mass and the other one has a high amount of muscle mass, they could have the same amount of body fat percentage. Let's say for example like 15% body fat. But the one with the lowest amount of muscle mass will look a lot less lean, while the other person with the same amount of body fat but with more total muscle mass will look a lot leaner. And that is because, as I've also mentioned in the video, the ratio between body fat and muscle mass is more in favor of muscle mass because it is higher and less in favor of body fat since no, obviously, since the muscle mass is higher, the body fat will be lower. So it could be that if you test your body fat, you might end up being like 15% body fat. And you see another person like, for example, Mike Thurston, who's also 15% body fat. And you're thinking like, what's going on here? This doesn't really add up. So you need to take the context in mind. If someone has a lot of muscle mass and he has a high body fat percentage in terms of like the general standards. And if that person looks a lot leaner than the body fat says that it is, it probably means that that person has a lot of muscle mass, right? And the next thing is the context of the visual perspective, right? If you look at pictures of people on Instagram who pretty much make a living in the fitness industry or just in general, if someone posts a selfie uh, with a good pump, with good lighting in the mirror on Instagram or on YouTube, for example, I just already pretty much gave it away. The context of that picture of what you're actually seeing is very important. It's pretty well known that uh, hashtag half lady lighting plays a huge role in how your physique will portray itself in a picture or on video. If you have direct down lighting on your physique, if you are pretty lean and you have a good pump in the gym, you will look a lot leaner than when you wake up the next day and you're looking in the mirror with some like natural lighting coming from the side of your bathroom window compared to you standing in a gym with a good pump and good half lady down lighting. So the context is very important, right? If you look in the mirror in the gym with a good pump, you might think, oh my God, I look freaking jacked. And then you wake up the next day and you look in the mirror and you think like, oh man, I'm looking flat and not really that lean. You shouldn't be comparing those two situations, right? Like I said, it's pretty well known that if you have a good pump and you're standing in some half natty lighting, uh, you will look a lot leaner. So don't take that as your only visual measurement in terms of how lean that you're getting or how lean you are, right? Be honest with yourself stand in natural lighting, take progress pictures, and then see from week to week if you're actually getting leaner or if you're adding muscle mass, if that's your goal. All right, and then lastly, one thing that I truly want to clarify, body fat measurements are momentary measurements. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I've had a lot of clients and I've spoken to a lot of people that really get discouraged by the body fat percentage that they get back from any kind of testing. They're like, oh man, I. I did a test and I'm like 15% body fat, but I thought that it was like 10% body fat. 
it doesn't really matter. It actually doesn't even matter at all. The specific number that your body fat ends up being has nothing to do with how you look. And by going off of all of the examples in this video, that should already be pretty clear, right? If you have a lot of muscle mass um, and you have a certain body fat distribution that allows you to store less or more body fat on your upper body and less or more body fat on your lower body, the number from a body fat measurement doesn't really matter. It matters how you look when you look in the mirror and if you're actually satisfied with that. You could be 20% but look like you're 10%. Oh, that's a pretty wide range but you know what I mean. And you could look like you're like 8% body fat and end up being 12 or 15% body fat. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is how you look when you look in the mirror and how you feel with the current look that you have. All right, and that's all for this video, guys. I sincerely hope you all enjoyed. I just kind of wanted to shine a light on body fat examples and give you all some realistic expectations and examples of what an actual body fat percentage looks like in reality. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to smash the like button because it truly helps out the channel grow. Comment down below and subscribe to the channel for so much more content coming really soon. I'm out guys and peace out. See you in the next one.